This video is intended to show you how to make sense of the internet. When you're out online and you're trying to find web sources for a paper, it can be really daunting. So this video is going to show you some basic tips and some things to keep in mind when you're doing a web search. So to that end, we're going to start with the sort of be all end all of web searching and go to Google and just do a basic phrase search for climate change. So you're going to notice a couple things. First, you get 129 million results up there at the top. So that's that's one shortcoming of web research. You got to really try to narrow down your search results. A second shortcoming is over here to the right. You'll notice that a whole list of what look like results are actually ads. Um, all of these, and you'll see, you'll notice .orgs, .coms, a bunch of different domains in there. But it's all paid advertising, so not very reliable. Um, and keep that in mind. .orgs, anyone can buy a .org, so that's not a very good. Um, indicator of quality and, and this is a good example Wikipedia is the first hit you know you never want to cite that um, right off the bat too you'll see Google return some news results um, articles but these are popular sources again NPR the Guardian Boston.com um, so you would use them with caution as you scroll down the page a bit we actually start to see um, some pretty decent results we get the EPA's website which is a .gov a, a good reliable domain um, a topic page from the New York Times which may or may not be good a nasa.gov page which is, is going to be fantastic and then a few hits for the guardian newspaper again down at the bottom which again you'd have to take with a grain of salt because it's a newspaper um, so it may or may not be biased may or may not have a bit of a uh, of an opinion or an agenda going on usually you want to look for .govs and .edus those are going to be your highest quality um, generally most reliable sources of information um, another difficult thing with, with online research is finding articles, and you'll notice that down here at the bottom, Google has what they call in-depth articles selected for you. So these may be tempting if your professor has asked you for scholarly articles, but remember to check your source. These come from the Wall Street Journal, Grist, and Rolling Stone, which are three just popular sources. So these are not going to be the same level of academic content that you would find in a journal, say, in one of our electronic databases. They may be citable, um, especially if it's a current events issue, but you, you do want to consider that before you use them. Um, and to that same end, if your instructor asks you to get um, peer-reviewed or academic journal articles, uh, and for whatever reason you don't go to the databases, um, you can do some limiters. You can do peer-reviewed journals, scholarly articles, academic articles. You can add that as a search term to Google. Um, without even going into advanced Google or Google Scholar um, and that's what a lot of folks do but keep in mind when you're looking at these results they do return three articles up at the top you'd still need to evaluate them and we have an upcoming video here in this series that's going to help you do that but under those articles whether or not they're good these these websites are really no better than the the first page skeptical science um, uh, a couple of daily blog sites. Um, you finally get Science Magazine halfway down, but you have like this is a, a R.A. Salvatore forums is a science fiction author forums. So again, the article that link is linked in that post may be great, but you need to keep in mind that you can't just trust anything um, you find online. Anyone can post anything on the internet. So everything here, your default mode when searching the web should be skepticism. Um, not taking any of this stuff just on face value. You're definitely going to need to dig deeper. And in, in the next two videos, we're going to show you how to do that. But um, for the basics here, just want to have you keep that stuff in mind. Additionally, if you're looking for resources, we have a bunch of good ones for websites on the library homepage. Under our resources tab, you'll see about halfway down recommended websites. Uh, if you click that link, what we've done on the recommended websites page uh, within the library homepage uh, is exactly what it sounds like. Uh, we've pulled out a bunch of uh, search engines and websites that the librarians at uh, Edison State College have already gone through ahead of time for you. So every time um, you're looking for a website, a good jumping off point would be to come to our list of recommended sources. We have them divided by subject, so they're pretty easy to navigate through. Uh, and again, like I say, more importantly, every single site that we link to here has already been vetted by one of us. So it saves you the time from having to look at a website and go, hmm, you know, is this a good source? Is this not a great source? Um, don't worry about that here. The recommended websites from the librarians are, are all going to be citable research. Uh, as long as your paper allows for a free website as a source, um, you, could, you could use our sources. Um, to that same end, up here in the search box, you'll notice the last tab is marked Research Guides. Uh, if you've never seen these, uh, watch for another video. We're going to have a video walking you through how to, how to do the research guides, but they're basically research starters. Um, every one of these topics has a minimum of one guide underneath it that compiles a bunch of good links to library sources, database books, 
Um, I'm going to open history and you'll see that there's uh, well over a half dozen different guides here on a variety of really specific topics. Um, so we'll open the Florida history just to show you. Um, and this is made by one of our librarians. She's got videos, books, databases. But the reason that I highlight the research guides for you in this um, evaluating the web is every one of these has a web resources or a websites box. And just like our recommended websites, every single website that we link to in here has already been checked out by a librarian and has been given the double thumbs up. So any website you see listed in one of our research guides, uh, one of the librarians considers a high quality resource that, that you don't have to worry about checking as far as whether or not it's a good source. Okay, stick around and uh, next up we're going to show you how to evaluate and understand websites. This video is designed to help you learn how to evaluate and use websites effectively in your research. Um, so what we're going to do is take a close look at some search results for this video. And we're going to do the, the same sample search we did for the first video in this section and look up climate change um, on Google. And if we take a closer look, what we're going to see is our first couple of results are a little iffy. We've got a Wikipedia hit. Then we finally get an epa.gov site, which is going to be pretty good. You're going to want to like .gov sites when possible. Then we have a New York Times news topic page, followed up by a NASA uh, page, and that's what we're going to start on. Um, now, NASA, most people would probably know is the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, um, a well-known organization that's very reputable um, and thus would be a good source to start with. So if you didn't know that, you can always look for that information on the page. What I would do is click on something like the NASA link and you'll see there's this handy dandy about NASA. It shows you who the administrators are, um, it gives you all kinds of information on their, on their structure of their organization, um, what they do, what they're all about. Uh, it even has their annual budget and, and annual reports over here. So um, even if you weren't sure what NASA was, you can always seek that information out on the website. And a good quality website will have much of that information easily available. We can also scroll to the bottom and on the NASA website clearly see the three folks who are responsible for maintaining this page on climate change. Um, so their three names are right here and as I highlight them you might notice that they're even linked. So if we click one, the form actually allows us to give direct feedback to the author or question or, or ask for more specific information. So as far as authority goes, this is a really good website. You'll notice also just as I mentioned that it's, it's well put together. So when we come into the first link here on evidence, we see right away a nice big chart full of statistical information. So one thing you'll notice that the NASA website does that's good is it links to a source directly below that chart, the NOAA. And again, if we don't know what that is, we can click it and, and easily find out that uh, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration um, is behind this data. And again, this is a .gov website. Um, it's got all kinds of information and statistics on it, and if we scroll to the bottom, we can see at a glance that you can contact these folks with more information. You can find out that um, as of the recording of this video, this video, um, the website was updated as recently as six months ago, um, so it's fairly up to date. And as we scroll down NASA's page here, um, potentially looking for information to use for our paper, you'll notice they're citing things all through their, their information. So you've got a bunch of footnotes here that appear as we scroll down the page. Um, that's good because that means all of that statistical and data information that they're, that they're conveying is in this page somewhere uh, cited, cited so that you yourself can be the judge of whether or not it's a good source of information uh, that they're deriving all of these things from. So as we get to the bottom of the page, you'll see uh, they've included all their references, just like you would at the end of one of your own papers. Um, so you have the ability to follow up on any of these resources. Um, some things that are even hyperlinked, so you can click right on them. So it's a, it's a very high quality website. So as a, as a comparison, let's take a look at a newspaper website. The New York Times, right above our link, has a, a topic page for climate change. So one good thing about newspapers is that they're really current, right? Um, if we came up here to the New York Times just to point out, you can click on their banner just like we did for NASA. I'm assuming kind of that you, go, you guys know what the New York Times is, but if you didn't, um, you can find out what the paper is all about by clicking them just like we did NASA. Um, however, one good thing newspapers are, are uh, all about is current information. So you'll notice that they have links. Uh, as I record this, those links are only two or three days old. Um, lots of current information. 
Uh, one thing that they're not so great on is academic or verifiable information. You'll notice that headlines around the web right here is current, but half of these uh, are just blogs. So you have no idea without doing quite a bit of legwork um, on, on the folks who are writing these, whether or not they're remotely experts or whether they're just folks who are, who are writing up a post about your topic. So one thing that you'd probably be drawn to is these articles about global warming that the New York Times provides on their topic page. And as we scroll down here, you'll see there's loads of them, over 4,300 different articles. Um, so again, these are the, the, same, the same pros and cons to using a newspaper article exist here. They're not necessarily scholarly as a, as a given. Um, sometimes they may be perfectly fine. So we're going to look at this one as an example. Climate change seen as threat to Iberian lynx. If we were to open this up, um, the first thing you're going to notice as we scroll down the page is that um, uh, on one hand, this is a very short article. So when you're doing research, this is a, a good reason to come to the library databases to find more in-depth stuff. But we'll notice that the author, um, Douglas Quinqua, um, it's not linked or anything. So we, we at a glance can't tell exactly who this guy is. So what I always do is, is click search Google, and in our case here, this is a pretty easy example because he's got a very strange last name. So um, the first hit is his homepage, and we can kind of make sure it's the same guy um, by scrolling around, um, confirming the spelling. Um, while you're up there, you can see that he updated this pretty recently, about a month or two ago, and you'll see he includes a bio. So he's a freelance writer and editor who lives in New York. Um, we can see he appears primarily in the New York Times, so we probably have the right guy, as well as a bunch of other popular um, periodicals. He writes about culture, science, media, lifestyle, and dogs. Um, so at a glance, this guy, is a, he's a freelance writer. Um, he's a newspaper and magazine author, so he's not professing to be an expert, um, but we need to keep that in mind when we look through his article, because if he's citing facts and figures and statistics, um, without backing those pieces of information up, um, his authority is a bit in question there because he's not a, a self-professed even expert in any field. So to that end, we have to take a closer look at the article content, and we can easily do that. Um, if we zoom in over here, you're going to see just by reading, he's using some stats and figures here, and at the end of his first paragraph, he just references sort of obliquely, scientists say, but he doesn't include a quote. So at this point, I'd be a little concerned if I was going to cite this article, just because we don't know where that info comes from. However, as you scroll down the page and you see him using even more information, you'll notice that when we get towards the bottom, he clearly cites that these reports come from the journal, the National Nature Climate Change. Um, so he's included uh, not just the source, but now he's got it hyperlinked for us, so we can easily click it. Uh, even the gentleman um, that he gets to weigh in on, on whether or not this is uh, concerning data, um, the, the gentleman, Miguel Simon, who comes from the Aberlin's Life Project, he links right to that. So if you were concerned um, you know, with that gentleman's quotes or thoughts, you can find out more information by clicking on that link. But for us, we're going to be more concerned about the data. So we'll go ahead and click the Nature Climate Change link, and you'll see right away it does appear to be an academic journal. Um, as we scroll down the page, it has uh, citation information. We can see that the authors um, prepped and, 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 and um, submitted this article earlier in the year, and it was published just last month. Uh, all of the authors are listed right up here, and when we click on them, you can even see contact information in a few other places where they may or may not be uh, indexed. So we can track down a, a lot of the information about this article. Uh, it even provides a nice citation here um, with an abstract so we can find out more about the article uh, without even you know, gaining complete access to it. So at this point, uh, I'd feel pretty confident that the, the, the stats and figures presented are, are fairly accurate, but you'd still probably want to get your hands on the article to make absolutely sure. The unfortunate thing, and one of the, the sad byproducts of using the, uh, the internet for this kind of stuff, is that this article is not freely available. They're asking you to pay for access. So what I want to point out is it, we have the citation information. We've jotted all of that down. So if you were to go back to the library homepage, um, you could come over to our services tab, click on interlibrary loan, and fill out this short form. And what that's going to do is allow you to plug in your contact information as well as all of the information you have on that citation um, and go ahead and hit submit on the bottom. And what that'll do is place a request with our interlibrary loan department and our folks in, in that department will track down that original article for you. And that's always a good habit to get into when you're citing information. Go and track down the original source so that you're sure it's as accurate as possible. 
So for one last example here where we're going to look at bias and a few other things, I'm going to do a, one of my favorite examples. I'm going to change up our search to Martin Luther King Jr. and hit search. Now when we do that, you're going to see a very typical Google results. Off to the right here you've got uh, you know some nice Google images and a, and a basic biography that Google's providing for you. But when we scroll up you'll see the, the first three hits are the Wikipedia page which we know we want to avoid, then a site called martinlutherking.org, um, followed up by the nobelprize.org uh, Martin Luther King bio page. So those are our first three hits and our first hit after Wikipedia is this martinlutherking.org. So when we open it, and just think of this compared to that NASA page, you can tell at a glance that it's not super professionally done, but it doesn't look that bad. Uh, it's a .org, so a lot of people will think, oh, okay, well that's an organization, it must be uh, official in some capacity, but remember, anyone can pay for and, and own a .org web address. So this definitely wants to, to merit a closer look. Um, and when we do start looking closer, you're going to find a few interesting things. Right on the home page, um, this is kind of a bizarre quote. Uh, if you read through it and you think that this is a site that professes to um, provide biographical information on Dr. King, that should be a little, a little bit of a red flag. And then as we scroll down here, we see why the King holiday should be repealed. Um, you know, and then we've got our, our subject headings up here, which are, are pretty, pretty well laid out, but a little interesting in some of their wording. Um, so if we open one of these segments, and I'll click Truth About King, you'll see right off the bat that this uh, article or essay, whatever you'd like to call it, the title alone, The Beast as Saint, The Truth About Martin Luther King Jr. When you read through something like this, you should start at this point to be to spe speculating that there's a little bit of bias in play. Um, you'll notice right down here in this paragraph, just by reading some of their language, um, let's take a look at this modern day plastic god, the so-called Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. So we can tell officially that there's a, a little bit of bias going on on this website. In fact, there's a lot of bias at this point going on on this website. You'll also notice that the sources here are, are pretty terrible. They list five sources down at the bottom of the page. However, none of them have very specific information except for potentially number two. Um, we may be able to track down that one with ease, but even the New York Times citation just says it was in the New York Times on that day. It doesn't give any kind of concrete information about an article title or anything, and particularly the last two, numbers four and five, give very little information about what those documents are, were they published someplace, how would we track that down? Um, so these sources are not great either. So even if you were still inclined to trust this material, at this point we see that the, the page isn't very professional, there appears to be a tremendous bias, the sources aren't great, there's no indication of whether this information is up to date. Um, there are a myriad of red flags going on here. Um, and if we remember from the NASA page, we want to find out who sponsors this page, what are they all about. Um, and that should be uh, the final red flag necessary to, dis to decide that this is not a very good page because when we scroll to the bottom, we'll see that this page is hosted by Stormfront. Um, and that may be an unfamiliar name to you, but if you've never heard it, here's their home page um, and Stormfront presenting the, the page on the history of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Uh, is a preeminent white pride, uh, white supremacist group. Um, so I would think that you should be sure at this point that the number one hit after Wikipedia on Google for Dr. King is probably not a very good source to cite in your paper. So do, re do keep in mind, you need to really do some legwork on this. Don't just trust the first Google result. Going down to the number third, and just to draw a comparison point, this is the Nobel Prize website. So you can see at a glance how much more professional the website looks. Um, just like with NASA, we've got an easy About Us link up here in the, in the upper right hand corner. Um, so if you never heard of the Nobel Prize for some reason, you could come here and read a bit more about um, how prestigious the prize is, who these folks are. Um, off to the left in the menu here, they'll, they're easily, they're not trying in any way to obfuscate who's putting on this page. They've got an About Us link, um, contact information for, for folks who could help you out with this article. Um, and then they've got a nice, concise biography of Dr. King. Um, off to the left, you can find facts. Um, his speech that he gave when he won the Peace Prize, and then take a look at their selected bibliography and compare it to the Stormfront site we just looked at. Look how detailed this is. These are all in correct format. Uh, very easy to track down. If, if you um, saw that something was cited in their article and you wanted to track it down for yourself, it would be easy to do. They even provide the MLA style citation 
uh, right here at the bottom of the page for their article um, in case you wanted to cite it in your paper. So I, I hope that looking at those two sites about um, Dr. King uh, really draws uh, a good comparison for you and what to be looking for when you're when you're vetting these websites for things like authority, currency, their purpose, um, their perspective, and their potential for bias. Um, these are all things that you should be keeping in mind when you're evaluating websites out on the internet.